How beautiful is that? G'day folks, this morning I've come over to Lake Moodamere to do a little bit of bait fishing. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. I absolutely love fishing at Lake Moodamere. I spend a lot of time over here, particularly in the cooler months. It's mostly a carp fishery, although I have caught a few redfin and a couple of yellow belly here as well. This morning I'm going to be using two rods, both with a Patnoster rig, one with a couple of Janjuck worms on it, and the other rod with some corn on it, to see if I can catch a carp or hopefully a bycatch of a redfin or a yellow belly. Righto, rigged and ready. First rod, as, as uh, stated, Patnoster rig, Janjuck worms, two of them out there. Way out there. That cast a long way. Second rod, same pattern osterig, but with corn. Now, if you look here, you'll notice I've filled the hook with corn. Some people like to just use a couple of kernels. I like to fill the hook. My, th my theory is they like corn, so give them lots of corn. That's how I operate anyway. Here comes a typically beautiful Lake Mutami sunrise. It's an absolutely gorgeous place to be at sunrise over here. And what I found last year in the cooler months was that right on sunrise, when the, the sun first hit the water, was the best time to catch fish. I don't know whether the sun's going to hit the water this morning because of the clouds, but I'm just hoping that same time of day fish as well. This is cool. If I look here, I can see the sun isn't up yet, but it's very close to getting up. But if I look around here, the sun's actually shining on these trees. So the sun's up if I'm about 10 foot higher than what I am. <laughs> I just had a look at the Victorian Fisheries Authority website which lists all the waterway stocked, everything that's ever been stocked in Victoria. Here at Lake Moody I went back five years to on this day, 2016, so five years ago. In the last five years, Lake Moody has been stocked with around about 600 catfish. To be exact, there was 37 adult catfish at one kilogram each and 560 catfish fingerlings, or I think they're called fingerlings, little baby ones. It's also been stocked with 50,000 yellow belly or golden perch. So in five years, it's had 600 catfish and 50,000 yellow belly. Now, there's not a lot of redfin in this lake. They are, they are here. I've caught a few. I think I caught like two for the whole of last year. So predation from redfin on the fingerlings shouldn't be too high. So I suspect that a lot of those fish will have survived. And I suspect there's a lot more yellow belly and catfish in here than we realise, particularly yellow belly. But the trick is, we don't see many of them. They've got to be here somewhere. They can't get out unless the lake floods, and it hasn't flooded since 2016. I reckon it's a case of just trying different things. When I come here, I always do the same thing. I sit on the bank and I use worms and corn and I catch carp. But I reckon it's a case of you maybe try lures, maybe try different baits, maybe try bait fishing and look around. I know where the deeper parts is deeper along that bank over there than anywhere else. Maybe it's a case of just finding the deeper spots at the right time of day, right time of year. It's a case of cracking the code. But I reckon they're here. I reckon there's a lot of yellow belly in here to be caught if we can work out the best way to catch them. And the best way to do it is by trying something different than just sitting here. But this is relaxing. <laughs> just had my first nibble. Getting a couple of nibbles on this rod here. As always, every time I get up and walk over towards the rod, it stops. Now, as soon as I sat back down, I got another nibble. Whoa, 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 me carp rod, me corn rod. Oh, I missed it. Had the best bite and I missed it. Gotta get in this time. It's got a nice bite on my corn. I've got him. I'm on and I've missed the hookup. You won't believe why I've missed the hookup. Gee, it's a heavy fish. My GoPro, after 15 minutes of being inactive, if I don't do something with it, look at even just look at it or turn it on or film or do anything. If I don't do anything for 15 minutes, it turns itself off. And it just turned itself off and I just reached up to turn it back on and then I got a bite. <laughs> so I missed the hookup after all that. That's not fighting, it is now, because that's not fighting a huge amount, but it's a strange sort of a fight. Whoa, whoa! As many of you know, I like to use a combination of my anti-reverse and the drag, but some of these modern reels, the anti-reverse switch is really small, hard to sort of reach. Hard to find in times of uh, 
times of crisis. <laughs> Here he comes, that big old muddy, not a record breaker, he's not a record breaker, but he's a fair fish, and he, I caught him on the worms, had a real nice bite on corn earlier, and now it's uh, worm o'clock, I didn't bring a landing net because it's very smooth bottom here, and it's actually quite easy to beach, to beach the fish in this particular lake, and there we go, he's out of the water, it is out of the water. She is out of the water. Whatever you want to call it, it's out of the water. And I'm on the board. You beauty. He's very pale, his carp. Sometimes you catch him and they've got a fair bit of orange or even a bit of black in them, but he's just, he's almost stunning silver. Like an albino. <laughs> anyway, I'm just thankful after nearly two hours of uh, angling to be on the board. I'll dispatch of this carp humanely, then I'll get my line back in. Right, disappointed that I missed that hookup. It was a nice bite. My GoPro turns itself off after 15 minutes of not being used. It goes beep, 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 beep. The moment it done that, I got a bite. Ha! Anyway, two fresh Janjuck worms on. I've had one nice bite on the corn, and that one nice bite on the worms. Now I'll put that back out where it was, which is way out there. I'd like to express my sadness about the passing of Prince Philip. I think that's, uh, that's quite sad. He was very old, he was 99, but it's still sad. I come from a family of long livers myself. Most of their livers are about two or three foot long. Well, we nearly got pulled in. Whoa! I was looking, uh, I was looking at my phone. Actually, I was putting a photo of that last carp on Facebook. I think this one is larger than the other one. And uh, I looked up and I had a bite, and by the time I put my phone down and uh, carried my saw back over to my fishing rod holder, this whole stick was leaning forward, and the rod, the butt of the rod was off the ground, and it was, it was in trouble. <laughs> it was heading for the lake. <laughs> it's not just cod that pull rods in. I was, I reckon, I was about two seconds away from losing this rod. Then I don't know whether I'm going to land this fish. If he goes into all those reeds, there, I mean, I could be in a bit of, bit of strife. Could be the size about him. Whoa! Just got to keep my eye on my other rod. I'm a little bit uh, cautious now. <laughs> Imagine the flack I'd cop if I lost another rod in the river from a fish. Especially using the same stick design. Totally forgot to bring any of my metal rod holders this morning. The one Simon Humphrey made for me is an absolute ripper. And it's in the shed. Come on, you big silver sewer trout. Don't go behind all those reeds. I just got a bit of, I saw a bit of colour. As they say in the salt water, I've got colour. Don't wrap me, if he wraps me, I can see his tail. If that wraps me around all that crap, I'm not going in after it, I'll give you the tip. Right, he's, he's broken free. I've got to break free. I've got to break free. Is he hooked in the back? Sometimes they get the line wrapped around their, their back, the fin, the uh, is it the dorsal fin that runs across the top? I'm not sure, but that makes them feel a lot bigger than they are when that happens because they're sort of pulling from a different angle. I think that might be what's happened here. So he's not fell hooked, but the line's tangled around him. Now he's just, just broken free now. Come on, big girl, big boy, big sewer bass. Beaching, 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 like a beached whale. Your bitched is brew. Ah oh, no, your bitched brew. This one's not as pale and anemic looking as the other one. It's got a bit of orange and a bit of colour to him. But anyway, I'll unhook him, put him on the pile, get my line back in. Right, folks, now I'm about to pack up. So that concludes my magical morning fishing at Lake Mudamere. I caught a couple of carp and I saw an absolutely magnificent sunrise. Just stunning. I've had a wonderful morning. 
During the winter months, I'm probably going to be spending more time here. I really enjoy fishing here on sunrise in the winter, so you can expect to see more of these videos. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, why not give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.